And these kids are like, you made me join the Marine Corps, you helped me so much. Like, and when you hear those messages, you realize like you start to lose yourself sometimes because yep. you're focused on so much. But when that one person yep. touches your heart, it revives you again. Yep. And that was like one of the biggest, like I had been doing YouTube for a year and I was so starting to like, God, man, this is starting to get really tiring. But after that event alone, which I have a video on, mm -hmm. it just refueled me up. It's our first time, it'll probably be the first time, and maybe every year this time, that we say, go Navy. What am I talking about? We're here in Philadelphia for the Army-Navy game, and I'm here with the man, Armando Nava, the beast. What's going on, brother? What's up, man? Dude, Thank you, so man. nice to meet you, man, and it's so nice to connect. All right. Now, I'm excited about this conversation simply because Armando here has done something that I wish I did when I was in the Marine Corps, which is being more thoughtful and documenting my service. He's still in the Marine Corps, and for those of you that's watching this video, you might be active duty, you might have been in transition or, in, uh, or currently uh, uh, leaving the Marine Corps, or you may be even uh, maybe six months, a year, two, five, 10 years out of the military altogether, not, not just the Marine Corps, but you know, you know, some, sometimes people just don't know what to do. And uh, part of this conversation is to kind of dig into this guy. Why? Guys, check out his YouTube channel. How many YouTube subscribers right now after two years of doing your YouTube channel? We are at 343,000, so. 343,000? Actually, we're at 434,000. <laughs> Jesus, that's... He just picks up 100,000 yeah. subscribers just like that. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people watch you on your YouTube channel. You obviously, you've created a massive, massive following. Mm -hmm. But I think the most interesting thing you told me yesterday is when you left Okinawa, mm -hmm. uh, you were there, what, a one-year unaccompanied tour? Uh, two years. So two-year unaccompanied. Unaccompanied. Well, so you documented your whole career in Okinawa, but when did you start with your YouTube channel? Actually, as soon as I landed to Okinawa, as soon as I landed back in- so Was that your first duty station? Right, yeah, that was my really? first duty station. Really? So out of boot camp? Out of boot camp, yep. School? Mm -hmm. Oki. Yeah. <laughs> I know, they gave me like, yeah. they're like, you're gonna get some Oki in you. So from San Antonio, Texas, what was it like then for you to be in Okinawa, Japan? I mean, it was definitely a crazy transition just because, you know, you're so used to talking to people just like this. Um, yeah. You're so used to going to a convenience store and knowing what you want out of the, you know, the shelves. And then going to Japan, it was just like, yeah. how do I, how do we do this? You know, yeah. I can I can demonstrate, but um, it, it was very hard to communicate the first couple months. But Did you ever have sushi before? Oh my God, no, not you, like that. You never had sushi before? Well, I had sushi before, but it was in like... It was California roll. Yeah, it was like... Rice and stuff like right, that. Right, yeah, yeah. But when I went to Japan, Jesus, these, like, these people put their heart and soul into the sushi. Like, I've never seen it before. Like, they'd go in the morning, they'd go fish, yeah. they'd bring the sushi back, and they slice it nice in front of you and blow torch it. Like, oh my God, these guys. Love carrying yeah. attention to the to sushi. Yeah. Right, yeah. Did you, uh, uh, did you guys hear about my funny story? My funny story is that uh, I was having homesickness uh, when I was, when, back in my day, when I was in Okinawa. Uh -huh. And uh, by the way, the video just showed me about you on the wall leaving Okinawa. Yeah. I remember sitting there with my boys on, on, on the wall there, you know, you know, it was 20, 20 some years ago. But it's interesting to see you in high definition 4K shoot the same video. Because <laughs> guys, check out, check out this video. This was me sitting on the wall in Okinawa back in the day. But I just wanted to... Go home. Where's it at? Right here. Ah! That's me. Zapala. This is Zapala's place. This is Paul's place. That's Paul's place. And this is Nava the Beast running down the wall when he was leaving the Marine Corps. The Marines told me, hey, Sapala, you miss home? I'm like, yeah, I miss home. He says, here, have, with your sushi, have some guacamole. I love guacamole. <laughs> it was messed, guacamole. That's messed up. <laughs> it was wasabi. Wasabi. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you have an amazing story about growing up and your, and your, um, who, who's, who's challenging, you, challenging you to get involved in, in, in the list? Or is that just something that you just came up on your own? Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life as soon as I was graduating. You know, I thought like, oh, let me go to college just like everybody else. I was just kind of following the bandwagon. Individual, that uh, I actually was dating his daughter. It was, it was crazy because I used to come over every day, you know, and just, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend thing, I'd come over and 
he didn't really talk to me. He was just, he was a very hardworking man. He had very nice things, very beautiful home. And I'm like, how does he afford all this? But I never asked questions. So one day, I think I had like six more months left till, till I was graduating. And he comes home, you know, this guy, he's tired. He's, you just hear the key slam as he's walking through the door. And I'm like, oh, like he's home. And I have my girlfriend watching TV. And uh, out of nowhere, he, uh, you can hear him ruffling in the kitchen. And then he comes over, he grabs a drink, leans over the counter. And he looks at me and me and my girlfriend like turned down the volume like hey what's up you know i don't want to say his name but we'll, we'll call him jeff hey jeff hey <laughs> jeff. <laughs> hey what's up jeff and uh jeff leans over and he's like nava you know he didn't say it like this but he said you know nava what are you gonna do with your life yeah you know what are you gonna do with your life you have a couple months left and you come here you watch movies all day, you go work at Red Lobster, and that's it. There's no growth, there's no progress and success there. And I was like, well, Jeff, like, you know, I got I got my P's and Q's, I, you know, I got everything in line, you know, I'm gonna go to college, I'm gonna do this. Like, dude, you barely passed high school. You know, he was calling as it is, but it was good because it was a reality check. He tells me, he was like, you need to join the, the, the military, you need to join the Marines. And I'm like, whoa, 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 Jeff, Marines? Yeah. You know, Are we out there? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, up there. I was like, hell no. I mean, I got a little heated. You know, I got mad. I stood up and I told my girlfriend, like, hey, I, I can't be doing this. I'm not gonna argue with mm -hmm. your dad. I started walking out, and I'll never forget this little thing he told me before I left the house. Is well, then again, you never would have made it anyways. And he that, told you that. Yeah, he told me that, but he knew right away that that would trigger me to do okay. something. Um, so you're motivated. What what moves you is you like to prove people wrong. I love to prove people wrong. That's if someone tells me I can't climb Mount Everest, I'll do whatever it takes to climb that. Yeah. Even, yeah. And then that night alone, I went to the recruiting station. Didn't really know what I was getting myself into. Like you know, Army, Navy, and all of them were all together. But I'm like, this guy challenged me to the Marines. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna complete the Marines. I'm gonna get it done. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Check that out. So. That's awesome, yeah, I mean, but why the Marines though? Why not the Army? Why not the uh, uh, Coast Guard? Why not the Air Force? The <laughs> Air Force, Air Force uh, well, I just saw the Marines as just that elite force, you know? There's like the cool kids that didn't really talk, but they were just chilling in the background. And you'd be like, dang, I wanna be a part of those cool kids. You know, the other guys are just talking, like, hey, having fun, like, but the cool kids are just sitting back like, yeah, you know you want to be a part of it. You know? <laughs> so I had to, I had to. Was, um... and, and, you know, you were in Okinawa, you were there with the, Nar the Navy, the Air Force, the, you know, the Army, the, the Marines. Is that what you, what, what it actually turned out to be? You're, the the jarheads are big badass, <laughs> cool kids in the back. Let's just say our, our way of living, our way of, um, the way we set our standards is far more different than the other branches. More people can contest to this. Like, you know, we, we do set a high bar and that's yeah. what I love about Marines. Yeah. But being Okinawa, you see all these different branches, how they conduct themselves. It's, it just isn't that Marine, like, like you know, brother sh brotherhood, like yeah. working together, you know, you got your buddies to your left and your right. And, it's just something about the fabric of the Marine Corps. Right, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's hard to explain. It's hard to explain. You have to go through it in order yeah. to realize it. Like, you're wearing a Marine Corps sweater right now because that's how proud you are of being a Marine. <laughs> yeah. And then this is that ugly sweater. <laughs> <laughs> Holiday season. Uh, uh, hoorah. Uh, but when, when you're talking about, you know, your time on active duty when did it come to your mind says you know what i need to start a business while i'm on active duty mm -hmm. you know most marines are like oh, i got so many things going on i'm in transition i'm just learning this new world of the marine corps and you're like let me learn the new world of the marine corps but let me start my own business right right well it was funny because you know i had been doing youtube for a little bit you know it was very challenging i was waking up early in the morning you know i was still a marine at the end of the day like i none of this defines the fact that I'm, you know, I'm not a hold to a certain standard. Sure. I'm still doing what I gotta do. I wake up for PT at 0430, everything. But you know, I had YouTube going on. And I was like, oh yeah, I love this, you know? And then I started to get a momentum over it. I started to get a little like, all right, I got the groove of this. Yeah. It's like you're riding a bike and you start riding it. And then you're like, you know what, let me, let me grab something on the side. Just throw my bike too. So I'm like, gotcha. oh, you know what? Let me, let me learn business, you know? I've always wanted to start a business and I wanted to challenge myself. So that's when I started getting into entrepreneurship, business, um, and it was definitely a lot harder than I thought it would be, mm -hmm. um, just because you're balancing you know, social media, documenting your life, being your own editor, producer, director. Doing it all. Yeah, you're doing it all, and you're still a Marine. Yeah. And then you're throwing on a business too, which I didn't know anything about when it comes to business. It's all about trial and error. After that, I just started craving that whole, building something that, that you, know, you work for, and working not 
for somebody else's dreams, if that makes any sense. Of course. You know, working for your dreams. I think right. that's a lot of people fail to realize that we all have these dreams and aspirations, but people are afraid to make that first step. Yeah. The last thing I want to do is be on my deathbed, you know, like, man, I should have started that company. Even yeah. if it failed or succeeded, yeah. at least I started it. Yep. I remember in Oki, uh, I'm looking at my, some of my staff sergeants and gunnery sergeants there. They were there for like maybe their fifth time, sixth time already. Mm -hmm. Maybe their, you know, uh, sixth deployment or something like that. And yeah. we're, we're in Oki. And I'm, I'm looking at them like they're freaking hardcore devil dogs, right? But I ask myself, do I really want that life? Do I really want to be separated from my kids? Do I really want to be separated from from home? Mm -hmm. to, to me, families, you know, I do everything I, uh, in my life for, for my family. And just being ripped apart from that, which is something that uh, they don't even train in boot camp. You just got to deal with, mm -hmm. you know, write some letters, yeah. you know, <laughs> do, do some things. So um, what were the first initial YouTube videos that you started doing, that you started getting traction. I said, like, well, this, I'm, I, I think I'm getting pretty good at this. Yeah, well, it all started with documenting my life. It was just, hey, let me document my life so one day I could show my kids. That was my thought process. That's why. Yeah, and I wanted to show my mom that I was still doing good because she was always asking about me. And the time difference in Okinawa, you barely talk to him. So yeah. she'd watch my videos like, oh, he's, he's having fun. <laughs> yeah. When I started getting into the whole like concept of documenting the Marine Corps and lighting people's lives or like kids that are wanting to join the military and enlightening them like what is it what are they really getting themselves into no one has has been able to do that so i started showing everything and anything you know me going to different i went to jungle warfare course i showed the whole jungle warfare course us training you know having yeah. a good time and then um so smart to have a video camera with you while well, going through jet was it was it just training jungle environment survival training yeah, jungle, yeah. yeah yeah by the way the other marines would they think about bringing a camera with them yeah like, you, you, you kind of stood out there yeah i, I was yeah. definitely the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was definitely out there they they'd always question like why are you bringing a camera like blah blah i'm like oh that's right i'm just trying to show my mom like videos so, okay you're just trying to do for your mom I'm like, yeah yes that's right <laughs> but in reality i was editing all night like you know making something nice for the people and one of the biggest things is like a lot of these kids or a lot of people they have always craved to live that military experience and it hurts to hear like i couldn't do it because i had asthma or mm. had a broken you know you know a missing leg or whatever it may yeah. be and uh, flat feet yeah, yeah. Right, yeah flat feet. <laughs> but for me it's like i can give this experience to other people that are at yeah. home yeah. you know so why not even if it takes a little bit more time and effort and people will make fun of you and look at you weird why not give that opportunity to other people? So the initial video that started getting traction was you just documenting mm -hmm. and vlogging. Yep. Because I know you got these pretty cool, you know, Marine versus whatever mm -hmm. videos, which is which is pretty awesome. Okay. You know what? Actually, I totally forgot about this. My my buddy Kyle, he is who's an airman YouTuber out in Okinawa, and at the time I had 300, 300 subscribers, and he had like seventy thousand. So I was like, oh my what? God, this guy's a beast. Like yes. one day, I. I you know, I was making videos at this time and I, I messaged him on Facebook. I'm like, hey man, like I just came out of here, I'm a PFC. He still has the message, it's really cool. But I'm a PFC and I have this really great video idea. I think it would go big and I don't care about like anything. Like I'll give you money to make the video for you. I'll set up everything. You know, I'll be there on time. You know, he was like, oh shoot, like, yeah, why not? You know, yeah. give this kid an opportunity and see where the video goes. And that was Marines versus Air Force, which, mm, yeah, you know, yeah. never, like no one ever thought of that. I'm like, oh, that, that'd be a really good rivalry. Nobody had thought about putting out a video, but everybody's thinking it. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, like we always, we, like, we know we kick your ass, but let's document it and prove it. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? And you know, I had to live up to that Marine, like, come on, let's, let's, let's show them what's up. Yeah, because you represent the Marine Corps now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that weekend, you know, I, you, I went off base and I grabbed my, my green skivvy shorts and green skivvy shirt, you know, and I was ready to PT. I set up everything for him. We went down to Kadena and the track. Yeah, yeah. From the track. You know, I was there, uh, Marine, typical Marine, three, two hours prior, like waiting, like outside in the hot sun, like, oh man, Jesus, I didn't come <laughs> so early. Um, but because I was taking the green line, you remember the I green line? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I sat out there and uh, we made the video. He was a really cool guy, really, very humble. That first week, you know, he was like, oh, you know, the video is doing good, doing, doing good. And I'm like, oh, sweet, hell yeah. You know, and I was, I was, I was getting like a couple hundred subscribers. Wow. And then uh, he calls me one night, or one morning, 0430, or zero, yeah, 05, and I'm waking up for PT. And he's like, Nava, Nava, yo, look at our video. Like, we're on the news. Dude, look at all these articles. Like, go check your laptop right now. I'm like, oh my God, I'm like. So I go on my laptop and the video's already like at 100, 200,000 views and I'm like, Oh my gosh. And like, you see all these articles on Facebook, like American Military News, Military.com, like 
Marine battles air, airmen, like, you know, Marine called Nava the Beast, quote unquote, you know, battles airmen. A lot of the traction started coming to my channel. Wow. And then I started seeing, okay, this is called the wave. And I like to call it like the wave, right? Yeah. Either yeah. you're going to ride the wave yeah. or you're going to let it, you know, you're going to sink and fall. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, now that they're coming to my channel, let's create something bigger and better for them so they can like, you know, mm -hmm. expand. And I started like, okay, you know what? Let me, let me make that a series on my channel. So I started going up against an army and then uh, Air Force, Navy, and that just started becoming the one thing that people were like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Yeah. And it just started building off of that, still documenting my life and uh, just making those challenges, so. Wow. Yeah. So that's the way. So, so any words of encouragement for those like myself, you know, who's been like, man, I'm, I'm just trying to find that one video, that one video, one video. Because most guys I know would turn that surfboard back to the shore and say, you know, this ain't working. Let me find some other platform. Mm -hmm. or, but what words of encouragement would you give to my, uh, someone like myself or somebody who's looking to build their, 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 their social media presence mm -hmm. uh, and they haven't hit that one, that one video yet? I would say enjoy the process. Enjoy the process. Don't look for those things. Like, don't look for like, oh, I want to be the number one YouTube. You know, focus on the people you already have. So it will grow as long as you're putting hard work and effort into it. Yeah. And consistency, it will grow. Yeah. But you definitely, I mean, a lot of you, a lot of factors you put into hand when it comes to making big videos and stuff like that. But just focus in on what can I get out of this, but what can I give back? I love when it. you change, when I change that mindset, where it's like, what can I give back? Then, what can I get out of it? It just started. That's when it started growing. Like I wasn't so frustrated. Like, man, yeah. why is my videos not doing good? Yeah. And it just tears you down. And then people see that through your videos. Like they'll see you like. What steps would you give somebody in terms of practicality? Some like, like maybe three, maybe four, maybe five steps. I don't know. Whatever steps. One, two, three, to start building traction on social media and grabbing the presence. So step number one would be talk to, from what I heard you just say, figure out who you're talking to. Mm. Would that be it, step number one? Figure out your your niche, you know, what you love doing, what you can see other people doing as well. Okay. Um, so for me, it's fitness and military revolving those two things around. And then from there on, you want to find, um, you know, obviously a good camera. I mean, okay. even an iPhone works as well. We've, yeah, yeah. we've proven that. <laughs> but uh, camera. iPhone shoots in 4K now. Yeah. 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 Just do it. You know, it's not going to be perfect. Everything's not going to be perfect. People always like, I always yeah. hear this excuse where it's like, you know, now I'm trying to, I'm, I'm doing YouTube, but I just got to wait till I get all my ducks in a row and I get the right editing software, right this. Like, there is no right thing. It's just yeah. doing it. And when you start doing it, you're, you're riding the bike. You're going to fall a couple of times, right. you know, dust the, the dust off, but eventually you're going to get that momentum, yeah. you know, but the more you wait, it's just going to prolong it more. And it's yeah. like, you're just going to keep backtracking. So it's find the right camera, find the, the niche yep. and make that YouTube channel that you said you were going to make last year yep. and just do it. Yeah. Just do it. Learn. You don't know how to edit. There are so many resources online. If yep. a Marine can do it, like, you know, Marine they, Jarhead. They can figure it out. Yeah. Hey, everybody's got hope. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's got hope. You know, I, I was, you know, it was, it just took, uh, just time and effort learning yeah. on YouTube and then seeing what works, what people like. Yeah. How long does it take for you to create a piece of content? terms of hours man hours three three to four hours depending on how it is um, if it's just a standard vlog it'd be like an hour or two hours but when it comes to one of those big videos I have to really get down and like yeah yeah we gotta how get... did you learn storytelling because you tell you tell crazy stories on, on, on your YouTube channel man like you get you gross people into your story <laughs> I don't know it's just, <laughs> it's just me being I, I love to tell stories just because yeah. because it's easy to get down the rabbit hole of yeah. the beast videos yeah you know um and I, I feel like every video has uh as much as i like to to goof around in my videos and you guys will see that if you go check it out towards the end i like to pull them back to reality or it's like hey you know thank you for watching but keep in mind the purpose of these videos is for you to go out there and pursue that passion i wouldn't be here if it weren't for you guys but then again i wouldn't be here if i didn't put in the work Right. So go put in the work. Go make it like. You know, and, then, and then what's your close? I like how you close off all your videos. Now say it slower though. Okay. So, so, so what, here's the close to all of his YouTube <laughs> videos. Check that out. Three, two, one. But anyways, guys, remember stay hungry, stay humble. It's your life. Not that you keep doing you and go about your day. Don't listen to people in silence because you've got one life, your life. Make shit happen or sit in the silence and mobile life. Smash that thumbs up and stay fuego. Love you guys. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I love it, man. Over and over, just constant repetition. So what I love what you just said there about the process is that through the repetition, you will find your vibe. Through that repetition, you'll find your message. Through that video, you'll learn how to tell your stories. So, yep. keep, so keep doing it. Just keep doing it. I love it, I love it. Let's talk about your, your let's go, go back to the business because I know your inspiration is to encourage uh, current active duty for life after the military. Right, yep. Right? Uh, you got vlogs doing it and even you're even writing a book about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm, I'm active duty right now. I just got in. I'm, I'm a private, I'm a Lance Corporal. What the heck do I know about business? Right. Right? So what would you be telling a 19, 20 year old version of you? I would say, as much as you know, you already earned the title, you're a Marine now, but what else do you love doing? What else? There has to be something else. And usually for people, it's fitness, you know, or like something like that. And I ask them, it's like, well, could you see yourself doing that? And maybe, say you stay 20 years, can you see yourself doing that afterwards? Yeah, I can see myself doing that afterwards. So let's start something now. Mm -hmm. So when you transition out, you'll have at least something built. Maybe start that, you know, that program that you want to start and, and put it on Facebook and, and you know, put ads to it or, or you know, starting a YouTube or Instagram or something just to get your, your product or your services out there. So whenever your four years are up, you yeah. know, maybe you didn't build a 400, 300, 100 million thousand followers, but at least you built those maybe 50 to 100 to 1,000 maybe that are there because of your, your product and, and what you do. So for, for a private, it's like, yes, focus on the military, be the best freaking Marine you can be, be the like outstanding Marine, but also let's focus in on your dreams too and your goals outside of the Marine Corps. Because the Marine Corps is a vehicle and it's for a short chapter of your life. Right. That's, that's wise, man. You're wise beyond your years for me to say something like that. Because uh, listen, when I was 21, 22 years old, like he is right now, the last thing I was thinking about was, you know, what my dreams were all about until somebody said, What's, what does your life look like five years from now? And one thing I want to ask you too is, you know, when you, when you are uh, dealing with Marines, because you know, a lot of Marines, a lot of military service members, active duty, they're just finding their identity. Yeah. Right. They just left home. They just graduated high school a year ago. Yeah. Right. And they're just trying to find them. Mm -hmm. uh, so how does one go about? Because you know, oftentimes, especially in Oki, it's like either you're PT freak. Right. Either you're an alcoholic. Yeah. <laughs> or in this case, use that time if not in the gym, if not at the bar, learn business. Mm -hmm. Would, would that be a third alternative? Because that, that was never a third alternative that was spoken right. to me when I was in, mm -hmm. in the military. Yeah, I would say. Learn some business skills. Learn some business. You know, a lot of, you get all these excuses where it's like, ah, oh, like, I don't know what I want to do now. Like, I'm just going to do another four years, which is awesome. Like, kudos yeah. to you. But are you doing it because you don't know what to do with your life? And you want that stable paycheck and those benefits? Mm -hmm. Those are the wrong reasons why you should be re-enlisting for another four years. And that's right. a common excuse I get all the time. It's like, oh, it's, I'm trying to do it for the steady paycheck, man. Mm. And that's it, it kills me to hear that because you're just throwing everything that your dreams are. Yeah, down. especially a Marine, you're supposed to be rising up to the cage right. and not settling down. Right, and the Marine Corps gives you those tools. It, it you, you, We've all seen it before. Yeah. It, it pounds you, it molds you, and it lays everything out for you. Mm -hmm. Now it's on you whether you're gonna start picking those wrenches up and start cranking away at your life. I love yeah. it. Your involvement with a lot of people in, in, in the business world. Now you're getting a lot of connections. What's it like for you now to be to be asked to to, to talk to the guy who started Call of Duty? To, to be to be asked, you know, to, to be asked to all these. What's some of the fun things now you're experiencing because of, of what you've built? Well, yesterday was really awesome. I got to meet the developer and the the creator of Call of Duty, which is a game I used to play growing up and got to drive around in this half a million dollar car around New York, <laughs> which is very scary, very, very scary. Right, it's Rolls Royce? Yeah, I was, yeah, he was like, yeah, you better have some good insurance, man. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully. Number two is um, meeting, it would be meeting you as well. Wow, yeah. I'm up there, huh? Yeah, you're up there. Hey, that's, just, that's pretty awesome, just, man. Because it's very easy for you, me yeah. and you to relate. I think it's pretty wise of you too because you have no ego. Mm. You know, so oftentimes the guys got, got ego. Of course we got ego to be the best and the pride to do the best what we do, but in terms of being humble and learning, mm. I mean, the thing that your iteration of be stay humble, stay humble, stay humble, yeah. you're living it. Right. Right? You reached out to me, you sent me a message on, on Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and in addition to that, you knew the value of time. Yeah. Like I'm be willing to pay pay you for a time. Bro, you ain't gotta pay me for a time. Yeah. It's just another devil dog, have another devil dog. And yeah. This whole experience at the Army Navy game is kinda like the older Marine at the Marine Corps birthday handing the piece of cake to the younger Marine. <laughs>
<laughs> so third experience. I went to my first pulley function and uh, these 500 pulleys out there. It was the Dan Daly Cup. And when I went there unexpectedly, I just went there because buddy was, hey, come down to the pulley function. They're having a great, great time. A lot of pulleys are out here. And when I went there and one of them called out my name, is that not with the bees? And all of them turn. They just completely of whatever they're doing and they all just bomb rushed me. And they just like gave me hugs and like. Yeah, you freaking YouTube sensation, and, man. And these kids are like, you made me join the Marine Corps. You helped me so much. Like, and when you hear those messages, you realize like you start to lose yourself sometimes because yeah. you're focused on so much. But when that one person yeah. touches your heart, it revives you again. Yeah. And that was like one of the biggest, like I had been doing YouTube for a year and I was sort of starting to like, oh man, this is starting to get really tiring. But after that event, alone, which I have a video on, mm -hmm. it just refueled me up. Like, yeah. there's a bigger purpose. Now that I've molded all these kids, now that I've, you know, gave them the opportunity to become, you know, learn from my life and be a Marine. Mm -hmm. Now, how can I shape them as well as they're being Marines? Good for you, man. You know? Yeah, so, good for you. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, money smart guy, what advice would you give to Marines about money? About, ha not, not necessarily the word invested, but how to handle their finances because, Finance is one of the worst things that active duty service members mess up no. and they set themselves up on the wrong track and it takes them years to recover if they don't do it right. I would say the best thing for me was investing in my knowledge. I mean, that's probably one of the biggest, hardest things because, oh, I'm not gonna buy somebody's knowledge. Like, that's dumb. Yeah. But when you buy somebody's, like, like you're essentially buying somebody's with their head. Yeah, yeah. You know, what they what they went through for years. Yeah, yeah, what they went through for years. And it's it's all about making that small commitment that can change your life forever. And one of the biggest things for active duty service members to do is make sure they, they keep their money tight. Right, right. right? Yeah. Cause so often they sign up for a two year loan or three year car loan, mm. but they got one year left on active duty. You know, yeah. like what the heck, the math, like the math doesn't, Add up, how yeah. are you supposed to pay for it after the military? You still gotta pay just because you leave the military doesn't mean you stop paying it just because, right. because your agreement was not with the military, your agreement was with the bank. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, I mean, you've seen some, what's, what's the, uh, what's a, a dumb mistake, a dumb money mistake that you witnessed when you're in the Marine Corps of, Marine, of a Marine making? Oh man. I, I can I, tell you one, I tell my, my dumb Marine Corps mistake was getting married too soon. <laughs> how, many, how many times have you seen that happen? You guys married, who would you marry? For what? <laughs> well, I, I miss home. <laughs> yeah. Knucklehead, right? And then their, their life is jacked up. So what would be your dumb? Dumb mistake. Dumb, dumb, and dumb money mistake. Money wise. I, I mean, I did go through a phase where I just started partying and, and drinking on the weekends. At least you got it out. I, I, yeah, I got it out. Yeah. Um, and you even keep living it, you know? Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I'd, I'd go to Tokyo and I had the time of my life and, you know, you got money from the military, so you just start, yeah. you know, just throwing it all out there. After doing that for like, geez, for, I think it was a two month streak or three month streak. Yeah. Like I just like started just going, like, I don't know why. I just, yeah. It's, it's one of those phases. I mean, you've had it probably before sure. too. Of course. And uh, at the end of it, I was like, okay, I'm broke. I got no money in the bank. Got nothing to show for. I got nothing to show for. A hangover. Hang hangover. <laughs> and I, I'm almost regret everything I did. Like, yeah, you know, like. It, what's, it, the, what's the point? Yeah, what's the point? And it's like, I could have used those thousands of dollars that I would buy bottles and all yeah. this stuff for, for what? Like, I could have used it to put into my business or a saving. Yeah, or, how's Fuego doing these days? It, it's it's going good. Um, we, we actually just uh, sold out of everything this is oh. uh, it, it, it's crazy because we started off with just the small shipments yeah. and then seeing those big shipments come in a thousand and then having those like sell out it just goes to show if you put so much passion and effort into something that you love then the return will be there yeah. and now we just cleared everything from our inventory and we're relabeling relaunching the whole like it's called fuego 2.0 so we're just making this beautiful like like I, I saw the, the white bottles, they're completely changing the white bottles and the labels and the website. Wow. It's, we're just gonna revamp it. It's very cool, man. Yeah, so. so. So what's making Fuego stick out versus anything else that you can get online? I would say. Why are you selling out? Why are people just buying your stuff? There's a story behind it. It's not just a product. So the that, brand. There's right. a brand behind it. There's a story behind it. It goes to show like 
even through looking through my videos, people see that the amount of hard work and effort I put into to Fuego, they love that. You know, yeah. it's not just like a supplement where it's like, oh yeah, it's a supplement. It, there's a story and a meaning behind those mm -hmm. words. I, it's funny because I used to, in my beginning videos, I used to always say, guys, yo, it's, it's Fuego time. Like before I even started a company, like before I went to gym and then actually making that into like, yeah. you know, business and a company. When you're looking at your time now in, in transition, what was your one thing that said, I'm not going to re-enlist, I'm gonna move on with my life after the Marine Corps? Huh, that was a hard one. Uh, so I was initially gonna sign up for another three years. That was, that was, I was all for it. They were getting all my package ready. Yep. Everything was good to go. I told this girl, her name started in Tehran. I was like, hey T, before I even started the package and anything, I'm like, hey T, I'm getting out. Remember, remind me, remind me I'm getting out because I want to pursue my entrepreneurship and target, you know, the masses, mm -hmm. you know? And she was like, okay, I got you. I'll remember, I'll remind you. And so I was doing all my process, a couple months went by, you know, I was about to turn my package and Sergeant T, she's a female that works next to me. She's like, Nava, hey, remember what you told yourself? And I have it written down in my notes. Hey, Nava, you're getting out, you're, you're you know, mm -hmm. stick to the plan, stick to the plan. Yep. And she told me, I was like, Nava, stick to the plan, stop. There's scarcity in what you're doing. You're doing out of scarcity, stop. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're right. That's, that's counsel, that's wise counsel. After that, I mean, I was like, hey, uh, Sergeant T, appreciate you. Sergeant Turan, <laughs> she's out there, Sergeant Turan, she still works in the building, but awesome. she made me realize like, stick to your goals, your yeah. dreams, you know? Yeah. Cause it's hard, you know, you know how hard it is leaving the yeah. Marine Corps. It's like, it's like leaving your mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you're telling me too, after leaving the Marine Corps, or after leaving Okinawa, you got uh, stationed uh, and you were down somewhere in the mix of things and a commander recognized your talent, recognized mm -hmm. your presence, Tell us that story. The commanding officer and the uh, public affairs, they, you know, they saw how you know, I was benefiting and, and giving back and, and showing the police, showing people that are interested in the military through my videos, the amount of value I was providing. So they were like, you know, hey, like, let's bring this kid in. Let's, let's take him to these events and have him talk to the kids, you know, tell their stories, just do that. So it was a win-win because I, I finally got to do what I love. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, preach the good word of the Marine Corps. It's good, it's good seeing these kids transition because you like gave them an opportunity and you see them become Marines. Yeah. And it's like, oh my gosh. Now they're out there in 29 Palms or, or, or you know, Okinawa doing yeah. And they send you messages like, hey, Sergeant, you know, I'm a PFC. I, I joined because of you and I just want to thank you. I, I love it. You, you got me out of, you know, being homeless or, or got me out of, you know, being in a home of, of abusive you know, family, wow, you know, wow. it's, it's those, some of those messages. Gosh, man, this is, this is why we're Marines. Like, yeah, that's right. Know? So we're helping those fight for themselves when they don't know how to fight for themselves. Right. Yeah. You know, that's good, man. So any words of wisdom as we, as we wrap stuff up, any words of wisdom you want to give out to your, your market, your, your viewers, the people that watch you, the people that saying, you know what, do I buy in? Do I not buy in? What would you tell them? I would say no matter where you get in life, no matter what position, no matter the amount of money you have, stay true to yourself and stay hungry, but stay humble at all times. That's my biggest message. Stay hungry, stay humble. Now for the beast. Listen guys, if you've been watching this channel and you've been able to tolerate this interview with this ugly holiday season, <laughs> Marine Corps, oorah, daggone it. Um, listen, you, you, you have definitely earned yourself a subscription on my channel. <laughs> But man, God bless you. Yeah. And I don't know if they still make these sweaters, but uh, we'll see. I don't know. But uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and you click notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like to follow our business page. And obviously, if you haven't done so, make sure you follow Nava the Beast here and join his journey from active duty Marine Corps to life as an entrepreneur, as a veteran entrepreneur. So with that being said, until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.